Shalom, shalom, shalom. Greetings to you all. Well, I'm stopping by once again. Hey, Wendy. How you doing, sis? I am here to speak on the behalf of my father, Yahweh Elohim. Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Father of our Lord and Savior Yeshua HaMashiach. Hey Stacy, hey Valerie, good to see y'all on here. I promise you I will not be before you long, I'm telling you, I, I won't be before you long today. Um, I just came by with some words, uh, not my own. Nothing I've made up, nothing I dreamt up, nothing I, nothing I read about, nothing I heard from someone else. Hey, Johnny's. But uh, I want to encourage you and to just give you what I see in the spirit. For those of you who know me, my classmates, my family, my friends, some of you know me as Clifton, some of you know me as Lamont, some of you know me as Mont, some of you know me as Prophet, some of you know me as Nabi. Nabi is not my name. Nabi is the Hebrew word for prophet. And lately you've been seeing Shaliyah before my name. Shaliyah is the Hebrew for sent one or emissary of Yahweh. And the Christians call them apostles. No, I did not make myself an apostle. No, I did not. I do not call myself an apostle. I am a sent one. But who do you say I am? Who do men say I am? Let God reveal it to you. All right. Without further ado, let me give some shout outs real quick. <clears throat> I'm going to give a shout out to, first of all, uh, my wife, Tanya, Prophet Tanya McNair. She's downstairs probably streaming, looking at me right now. Uh, I'm up here in my, um, my PMW spa. All right, I haven't finished it yet. We just moved in, so I have a ways to go, but it's my prayer, meditation, worship spa. And, uh, yeah, uh, for, for you guys who like sports, my hat's off to you, but no Steelers, no, uh, <laughs> no Falcons, no um, Panthers and uh, Deadskins or Cowgirls. No, don't get mad at me. I'm just messing. But yeah, it's going to be a place of meditation and prayer. So I'm up here. I've already saturated the room, the house. I was up 530 this morning, laying before God on my face, literally laying on my face before the Lord. And uh, there are some specific things that he wants me to convey to you all. Now listen to me, all right? Before I get started, I just want you to know that um, my presence here on social media is... <clears throat> Just by divine directive, I'm not here to promote myself. I'm not here to um, get my name known or whatever, or try to be something that I'm not. I am that I am, you know? Um, and uh, I make no apologies for the way that I speak or the way that I write, the way that I express the mind and heart of Yahweh. Um, sometimes it can be a little brazen, I know. Sometimes it can be a little rough. Some of you probably cringe at some of the things that I post, but just know. Just know that love is behind it because this is the time that God is trying to get his bride together back in the place where we originated in the Adamic state of holiness, perfectness, glory, consciousness, love, peace, abundance, prosperity. And I ain't talking about getting uh, rich and wealthy and all that kind of stuff. Yes, it's good to have money. And uh, no, I do not. Uh, fight against anyone who's trying to get money but let God be your primary focus let God be your primary driving force so that you can be a blessing to the people of God okay not just to hoard it for yourself um, as I lay before the Lord and uh, I really just as I always do um, just prostrate here uh, before God and just uh, pour out my heart to him and then just uh, Laying before him listening, you know, closing my mouth to hear. 
and uh, as he always does, he told me to stand on my feet and then he will speak to me. So I stood up on my feet and he began to speak. I am not a bootleg preacher. <laughs> I'm not a jackpot, some flaky, uh, you know, fly by night dude. Um, I don't have to explain myself to you, but I just want you to know that the word that comes out of my mouth, um, I, I get this stuff from God. I really do. Um, and yeah, I do have credentials. Yeah, I have trained. I have studied um, formal training and study at um, biblical institutions, as well as uh, denominational and church uh, institutions. But the greatest training that I've ever received was in the wilderness. I find myself at home in the wilderness. Uh, and so here I am. What did God say? What's coming next? Okay. <sighs> Harvey, he showed up. Irma, she's here. Jose is behind. And behind Jose is someone else. And behind that uh, tornado or a hurricane or tropical storm is something else. Listen, it's no reason to be frantic or in a panic. Okay, now, yes, you need to be prepared. And I tried, I tried to prepare you guys. I tried to let you know what was coming. And, uh, and uh, I let you know you need to stock up on your stuff, you know. Uh, some of you, you know, went ahead and did that. Some of you are scrounging at the last minute. Thankfully, Irma decided to change her path. But let me let you know this. Okay, now, uh, for my uh, Christian folk, okay, church folk, we seem to think that we can just... Uh, Live what you know, however we want, do what we want, say what we want, go where we want, just live our lives and be us, right? And then, at a time of storm and trouble and chaos and mayhem and catastrophe, all of a sudden, everybody wants to pray. All of a sudden, everybody wants to start praying the storm away. Turn your fans on and turn it in the direction of the storm and blow it away. That's nonsense. All right. We want to pray. Now, there's this, this, nothing wrong with prayer. Okay? Pray. Please pray. But you need to know something. You're not going to be able to pray everything away. Okay? Now, some of you are probably thinking, well, God, answer my prayers. And some of you churches, some of you pastors, you know, you leaders, you're probably saying, yes, God, hear the prayers of his saints. That storm just went another direction. Well, you know what? While we are blessed, somebody else is, is under a curse of a storm and being uh, uh, just just things taken away from them. You know, lives are being lost and, you know, everybody's getting gas and gassing up. You know, the service stations are running out of gas. Um, you can't find any bread or any water because <laughs> everybody's buying up everything because why? Oh, there's a hurricane. There's a storm coming. Where was your preparation when everything was good? Why didn't you pray before the storm came? Why all of a sudden now you want to believe God? God is getting tired of that. And then after the storm leaves and everything is good, then you're back to your old lifestyle. You're back to doing whatever you want to do, living however you want to live. Well, this is the message. First of all, concerning this storm, all right, concerning Irma, all right, we knew it was coming, right? So, uh, thankfully, it seemed to have taken a turn to miss most of the Carolinas. Um, but I'm here to let you know that this is not it. <laughs> a lot of y'all like, oh my God, we just missed it. But this ain't it. This is not the one. You ain't got to believe me. Look, you can be skeptical all you want, but I promise you, this is not the one. Okay? This is not the one you need to be looking for. All right? Don't stop preparing. Okay? Do not stop storing up the things that you need. Okay?
okay? Because you, you, I'm telling you, <laughs> you know, it's like the boy who cried wolf, you know? All of a sudden, he didn't prepare. He didn't think anything was coming or there was no, really not a wolf. And then the wolf came and took him by surprise. So I'm telling you, this is not the one, okay? <laughs> it's not. Now, uh, some of you watched the video that I posted concerning the uh, solar eclipse and some of the things. And if you haven't watched it, just go back and look at some of the things that were spoken. And since that day or that evening that I posted that video, uh, several things has already come to pass. Now, this is not to puff me up or to make me seem like, oh, my God, he's a powerful prophet. He's the man of God. No, I'm just a lump of clay that has the breath of God <laughs> expressing the mind of God. So all glory belongs to Yahweh. He is the one responsible for accuracy, for clarity. Okay. So I want you to know that. I want you to know I'm just a messenger. Okay. It has nothing to do with Clifton Lamont McNair, but I'm telling you what I'm saying today, what I'm going to say in a minute, you want to, you're going to want to mark this. Okay. And do not take it for granted. And I challenge you not to store this video or to save it and to just, you know, save it in your Facebook archives and to just keep it for yourself. But you need to share it with at least one person so that they will know what's coming. I'm telling you, you need to get this stuff out. Get the word out because everybody that's crying holy, holy is not from God. Every preacher, every prophet, every apostle, every bishop, every evangelist, every elder, every pastor that's preaching, you know, at the top of their lungs, screaming at the top of their lungs, leaping over uh, pews and chairs and, and, and running around the church and, you know, speaking in, you know, this whatever tongue it is, some learned, made up tongue. Some of these people, I'm telling you, God did not send them. You have to be sensitive, spiritually sensitive and discern who is who. Okay, now I'm not trying to make you suspicious of every man or woman of God. That's not what I'm doing. I need for you to wake up and be aware, okay, and know what voice is the voice of God. All right, now am I saying I'm the voice of God or the only voice of God? No, of course I'm not. Some of you powerful prophets out there watching me right now, you guys, you're on it. You women, you are on it. Keep on doing what you're doing. I encourage you, please continue to sound the trumpet. Continue to preach the word of God. But I'm telling you. As I stand before you right now today, this is what the word of the Lord has me to tell you. You need to know that we are getting ready to see a great turnaround in our political system, the government, and the state. The government and state concerning religion, concerning Christianity, concerning the church. Now, I know you uh, proclaiming and you're holding up your banner, long live the church. I love the church. Okay, not the building. I love the people of God, the ecclesia that houses the kingdom. I love the church. I love the assembly of the ecclesia. I love, I love the church. Um, but the church is getting ready to hit a rough spot. Now, I said a little bit about this in the previous video, all right? in the uh, solar eclipse video. Now I'm going to go a little bit in detail. This is what the Lord showed me today. Uh, you need to really, you, you and me, all of us, we need to really get on our P's and Q's concerning the Word of God, concerning knowing what the truth is concerning the Word of God, knowing the Bible, knowing Scripture, being able to have Scripture memorization. Memorization of Scripture is very important, not just to be able to recall it, but to have it etched in our heart and our soul and our minds so that we can walk this thing out. Now, the reason why we need to have this thing so much etched in us, okay, the Word. We have to be living epistles. Now, the Bible tells us this. Paul wrote, we need to be living epistles. All right? We keep preaching it. We keep teaching it. We keep, you know, proclaiming it. Yeah, we know what we got to do, but how to do it? Do we need to do it? We need to do it more so than ever right now. Why? Because the church is coming under attack by the government. Okay. All right. I know some of y'all pastors don't want to hear it. 
Okay? Now you can preach all, I don't care. Preach as hard as you want. All right? Throw shade, throw salt, do whatever you got to do to make yourself feel better. All right? But I'm telling you that it's going to get to the point where the church is almost going to have to be underground. And also, church is going to be, it's going to go back to house to house. Remember how it started in, 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 you know, the days of old, matter of fact, the first century church when they were preaching the gospel from house to house? Oh, yeah. All right. You ain't got to believe it. All right. You keep raising your money. All right. Keep milking the people for their money. Building on these extra wings to your churches. Keep on trying to build all these massive structures and you ain't got a handful, but, but a handful of people. All right, I'm not coming against you as a pastor. I'm not coming against you as a leader, as someone who's trying to build and plant. That's not what I'm doing. You need to be focused on the big picture because you're, you're, you got tunnel vision. Pastors, some of you got tunnel vision. Apostles, some of you got tunnel vision. All right? You're not focused on what God told us to focus on. And this is what the Lord showed me today. We are so much focused on trying to do our own little individual things in our own little cell groups, all right? We got these little cells of churches all over the place, all right? And everybody has their own agenda. When the Lord told us, we are the body. We're supposed to be one body. But everybody wants to be in charge. Nobody wants to take orders. Nobody wants to follow anybody else. But you teach the people that they need to serve, but you won't serve, all right, you want people to serve you, but you won't serve. Last time I checked, the apostles are supposed to be washing the feet of the servant. Jesus washed the feet of the apostles. You ain't washing nobody's feet. You want your feet to be washed. That's out of order. And any apostle who will not serve don't need to have that title. All right. How am I able to say this? I know what I'm talking about. And you know I'm right. Now. Concerning uh, what's going on in the world, the, the, the dollar, all right? The dollar is weakening. I know you've heard it. I know you've been hearing, you know, the dollar is fluctuating. You've been watching the Dow, you know, watching, you know, um, Wall Street, you know, and everything is fluctuating. But I'm telling you, we are heading toward the cashless society that we talked about a long time ago that we said in the last days we're going to be a cashless society. Oh, yeah. The day is here. It's not coming. The day is here. I'm telling you, there are things that are happening on Wall Street, things that are happening right now in our world trade markets that they're not telling us, in the banking systems that they're not telling us. But the Lord has revealed it to his servants, the prophets. The dollar is weakening. And that microchip, the RFID and whatever else, whatever else kind of chip that they come up with that they're going to promote, first of all, is going to be um, one that's optional. It's going to be optional, all right? It's going to start out optional. You can get it, you know, but it's going to be beneficial to you because no, you no longer have to have, have cash or whatever. And then it's going to have everything, you know, your medical information, your banking information, your, you know, everything. You know, I mean, come on. We know this thing is, is here. We know it's been here. It's been in Europe. It's been in California. It's been in different parts of the United States. Now, listen, I'm telling you, it's going to be optional at first, but then it's going to be made mandatory. It's coming. It's here. It's already here. You're going to see. It's going to. I'm telling you, keep watching the news. All right. Keep watching. It's, con, it's I'm telling you, don't don't blow a gasket and don't lose your don't lose your wig over it. OK, because. Um, the Bible says that we who are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, Yahshua HaMashiach, we who are able to stand in the knowledge of the truth. Now listen, we will be saved. We will be saved. Okay? We will we'll be saved from the wrath that is to come. Now let me tell you this. There are a lot of you leaders, a lot of you pastors, apostles, bishops, whoever you are, that are leading God's sheep. Uh, earlier I mentioned tunnel vision. The last, the last thing that the Lord told his apostles, and you say you're an apostle? All right. Let's see you do some, some real apostle work. All right. I, I hear and I see the title, but I don't see the work. All right. It ain't just me. All right. The Lord is getting tired of these people claiming to be who they are not. All right. Some of you are apostles, but you're still not doing the work that you were called to do. 
And what work is that? Go ye into all the world, preaching the gospel to every creature, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. We call that the Great Commission. That is the last set of instructions, the last orders, the last commandment that God gave to his sent ones, to his apostles. That is the focus of the apostle. That is the purpose for the apostle. That is the ministry of Yahshua's apostles. I don't know whatever, ever, whoever apostle you're supposed to be, whoever major an apostle. Now listen, I'm going to tell you something. I was, somebody tried to make me an apostle years ago. I said no. I was off with several, ch- several churches to be a pastor. Years in my ministry. I've been ministering over 26 years now. I've been off with several churches. I turned them all down. Doesn't make me a better man. Doesn't make me noble. I just know who I am and I know what I'm not supposed to be doing. Okay? Will that time come? It will eventually. But I know when God is speaking to me. I'm not going to allow a man to push me into something that I know I'm not. And some of you have been pushed into being a pastor. Some of you have been pushed into being an apostle. You've been made an apostle by a man and God didn't send you. And you wonder why you keep running around the same mulberry bush year after year, and you're not growing. You keep running around the same mountain because the grace is not on you. All right. I'm not trying to tear y'all down. I want you to hear what I'm saying through the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaEmet. God is speaking to his church. He is trying to get leadership Right. Trying to get the church back in order. The bride needs to get ready. Why? Because we are not teaching the people the way we're supposed to be training them. They are not being trained properly. They are not being trained to stand in the last day. How many of you are willing to say, all right, you know what? The Lord Jesus died on the cross for me. I don't mind giving my life for him. For God I live and for God I die. Some of y'all are quick to say that, but as soon as somebody pull out a 9 millimeter or some kind of automatic weapon, you'll be the first to hit the floor or run. Who's going to stand for their faith? Will it get to this point? Yes, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Persecution is coming. Matter of fact, it's not coming. It's here already. It's dormant, but it's here. And it's getting ready to wake up like you wouldn't believe. It's a sleeping giant. So what is the solution? Here's the answer. Now, some of y'all pastors, I know y'all been pastoring 5, 6, 10, 15, 20, 30, 50 years. However long y'all been pastoring and shepherding God's people, I commend you. All right? If you know God has called you, you know you're in the right place, keep on doing what you're doing. I bless you, and I ask God that he will continue to strengthen you, to continue to add to you, and to build you, and to just propel you into your destiny, and to help you, give you the wisdom, the divine wisdom to lead his people. And that's what I, I, I encourage you pastors who have a heart after God, because some of you are out there that you really have that heart after God. But then there are other, others of you who are out there. You know you need to close your doors. You just know you need to just go ahead and just, you know, tell the city I made a mistake. Okay? Tell God, you know, you made a mistake. Some of you won't do it because you, you the pride won't let you do it. But don't worry. Don't worry. God will do it for you. If you can't break yourself, God will do it for you. If you won't humble yourself, God will do it for you. So what is the word of the Lord today? What is he saying to the the people of God? He's telling us to get our house in order. Because what's coming next is going to take some of us out. What's coming next is going to cause some of us to become defectors of the faith. Instead of protectors of the faith. We're getting too comfortable just having church, having seminars, having conferences, having all these workshops. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, if, if, if that's how you raise your money or that's how you, you know, do your fundraisers or you feel like God is calling you to do that, to help build your ministry, your church, whatever. Do, do whatever you got to do to keep your doors open, however you, you know, whatever. But I'm trying to tell you, why are you doing that? The enemy is looking at us laughing because he knows that... 
as we are focused on those things, this satanic system, this diabolical system, Babylon, the Roman Empire that's emerging right in front of our eyes, is getting ready to put some of us back into the arena and loose the lions on us to eat us alive. Nobody's teaching about Revelation, the book of Revelation. Nobody's teaching and preaching about the four horsemen. Nobody's preaching about the plagues, the bowls, the, the vials, the seals. Nobody's preaching those things. Nobody's preaching about the last days. Nobody's preaching about hell and fire and torment. Why? Because we don't want to lose the people's money. It's not that we don't want to lose the people. You know, people equals money. So money helps, you know, sustain the church, the building. Uh I know that I'm probably going to get some pushback, but I don't care. You can preach on me all you want. I do not care, but come to me. Come to me. Call me. All right? We can talk face to face. Look eye to eye, pupil to pupil, and I'll tell you to your face what thus saith the Lord. And I'll say it in love. And I'll hug you, and I'll take you out to eat afterward. Okay? Because I love you, and I want you to be in right standing with God. I'm not perfect. I never was and never will be. But I know where I am in God. And what he has me to do in this season is to help prepare the people for what's coming next. The, the dollar is going to go away. The chip is going to come and be an optional thing that's going to turn mandatory. These storms is coming. You thought you saw something. It ain't, y'all, y'all ain't seen nothing yet. Okay? This, Harvey wasn't it. Irma it was not it. And is not it. Okay? There's one coming that you need to be prepared for. Okay? Signs in the heavens. Watch. Watch your news. Watch your news. Earthquakes all over the place. In unheard places. Okay? Yeah. Volcanoes erupting. Yellowstone National Park. Watch what's getting ready to happen. You better make a note of it. Write it down. Save it. Record it. Yellowstone National Park. Okay. I'm telling you, beware. I told you about the terrorist cells, right? Okay. ISIS. Mm. Iran. Watch. North Korea. Iran. Russia. China. India. Pakistan. I've called those countries out before. You need to see what's happening because Gog and Magog is coming back to the forefront. The Edomites, it, it, I'm telling you, it, ugh. America is going to lose its status as the world's superpower. We don't want to acknowledge it. We don't want to look at that. We don't want to, oh, that's not going to happen. It's never going to happen. Watch, the eagle will fall from the nest. The eagle will fall from the sky. The eagle will fall. I don't, I'm not saying it's because I want it to happen. The Lord is downloading this stuff. I'm translating heaven to you right now. I'm trying to get you to see that we are focused on the wrong thing as the so-called church. All right? We're focused on the wrong thing. We need to see the big picture here. We need to get ready for what's coming because we're not training the people to be able to stand in the last day. Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the only way he was able to withstand being beaten, whipped to a bloody pulp, the only way he was able to stand in the midst of his beard being pulled out, the only way he was able to withstand that cross, and you know they didn't sand that cross down, they had splinters. And his body was already, had open wounds all over it. Think about it. Carrying that thing all the way up Golgotha's Hill. And then they nailed him to it. And put the crown of thorns, you know, spear in the side, all that. But the Bible says he said not a mumbling word. He didn't try to plead his case. He didn't say, oh, Lord, no. He didn't say, please, don't, don't kill me. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't try to stop them. He was so strong that he didn't say a word. He was so strong that he didn't look back. He was so strong that he didn't change his mind. He didn't say, okay, you know what? I've had enough. Uh, I can't die. I can't die for these people. They deserve it. Let them, you know, just suck up their own sins and die for their own sins. But he didn't do that. He was strong enough. We're not teaching our people to be strong enough to endure persecution. 
We're not teaching and training our people how to be quiet when we're being tried by the enemy. We're not teaching them how to stand in the midst of a world that's bearing down on their shoulders. Instead, we're teaching them how to become wealthy. We're teaching them how to buy a house, how to buy cars, and how to buy stocks, which is it's all good if, if, if you plan to stay here. But this is not our home. We're just pilgrims passing through. You act like we're going to stay here forever. You're getting comfortable with the world. You're so comfortable that that's all you're focusing on is the world's issues and the world's things. What about heavenly things? There needs to be a balance. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, bishops, elders, whoever you are, ministers. I'm talking to all of you. I'm talking to me. I'm talking to all of us. Focus. Focus. Everybody has their own individual agenda. Every church, every ministry has their own little agenda. This is God's mission for me. Oh, this house, this is what we're going to do. This house, this is what they're going to do. That's fine. I'm not coming against that. I'm not going to fight you on that. But you're so focused on your own thing that you won't help another pastor or another apostle or another bishop. You want to assist them in their mission. But it's supposed to be one mission. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And you, all you're doing is preaching to save folk. You're just preaching and teaching people in the church. We're supposed to be making disciples. Disciples. But you want to burn out church people and work them to death. And then <laughs> you want to whoop them from the pulpit and beat them down in your sermon because they ain't doing what you want them to do. And there's a whole world dying around you. People in the club, people on the street. Homeless folks dying. Don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. What are we doing? Oh, what's coming next? I'll tell you what's coming next. Watch this. In the next few weeks, you're going to see a catastrophe break out. It's going to break out in this country. You're going to see weather happen. But check this out. Not just weather. You know, every time there's a storm and every time there's this big, massive tornado or hurricane and then the city that gets pounded, all of a sudden out of the corners and out of the shadows come these looters and they start breaking into places and burning down buildings and stealing TVs and washing machines and all types of electronics and stuff like that. Have you been listening about the new gun law, you know, the concealed carry? You don't know who's carrying now because anybody can have a gun. It was not an accident. It was no coincidence that these laws changed during this time. You're going to see people offing each other like you haven't seen before. And then the cops. Hmm. Law enforcement. Watch. A lot of cities, a lot of states are going to be superseded by the federal government. The government is going to move in and conduct their own law enforcement in our cities, in our states, in our communities. You want to see tanks driving through the streets, driving through your communities, armored tanks. Martial law, curfew. Yeah, I know I sound like a broken record. I've said it before and I'll say it again because it's, it's here. But what are we doing? How are we preparing for that? How are we preparing our people to deal with those things? 
we need to get right. Listen, you need to share this video, all right? Look, you ain't promoting me. I don't need your promotion. But you need to promote the word of God because this is the Lord talking to his people. He loves us enough to warn us. He loves us enough to tell us what to expect. He loves us enough to tell us what we need to do to get our house right, to get our house in order. I saw some things this morning when I was before the Lord. I prayed, I only prayed just an hour, just an hour, 5.30 to 6.30. And I was prostrate before the Lord, laying on my face, and he began to, to show me some things. And he said, okay, well, uh, you need to stand up on your feet. And then he'll, you know, he began to speak to me when I stood up on my feet. The Bible Belt, the evangelical church, the evangelical leaders, evangelical Christians. Mm. There's going to be such a war in the church, among church people. The government is instituting right now, as I am talking to you, a new religious order, a new religious system. You've heard. The one world religion, the religion that includes all belief systems, it's already here. And it's almost going to be like it's going to be forced. That this ideology and whoever bucks against it, whoever don't receive it, whoever does not ride that train is going to become an enemy of the state. I'm trying to get you to see something here. I'm trying to get you to see the Lord's vision, what he is showing us in this time. We need to be prepared. We got to be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord, Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus, the Christ of Nazareth. We need to stand on the word of God, but we can't stand on what we don't know. It's time out for preaching our feelings and our emotions and our, our opinions and our ideas and, and throwing, you know, shade at people through our messages and, and down playing folks and just lashing out at folks because we don't agree with them in our, in our message when we're supposed to be preaching the gospel. And this is what the Lord said to me this morning concerning the gospel of the kingdom. We apostles, we sent ones are supposed to be preaching the gospel of the kingdom but you what you call kingdom ain't kingdom come on jack i'm t i'm trying to tell you what you thought was kingdom is not kingdom it's christianity churchianity the kingdom of the gospel is seen in the teachings of yeshua concerning the kingdom the parable of the mustard seed the man who had two sons the ten virgins, five wise and five foolish. The kernel of wheat that fell on the ground and died. That's the gospel of the kingdom. But all this stuff we preaching, that does not sound like Yahshua the Messiah, that's your gospel. All right, you may get a lot of amens, you may get a standing ovation, you may get all these people pumping your head up saying how good you preached. You ain't impressing heaven. You don't impress heaven until you preach like Yahshua. You don't impress heaven and you're not making any spiritual headway until you preach the gospel of the kingdom. I don't care what they tell you. You can feel like you, did, you feel like you did something real great Sunday or whenever you preach. But if you did not preach the gospel of the kingdom... And that's, those are the teachings of Yahshua, Hamashiach. And the apostles, the 12 apostles, preached not their own gospel, but they preached the gospel of Yahshua, Hamashiach. They preached his teachings. They reaffirmed his teachings. Yeah, they used their own personality. They, own put, they, put, they probably don't put their own spin on it, you know, but they did not deviate from the teachings of Yahshua, the Messiah. So then if they didn't, why are you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Who do you say I am? <laughs> Who do men say I am? 
Ask God, he'll tell you. Look, I love you. I do, I love you. And if I didn't care, I wouldn't be here. But I encourage you to stand. Stand on the word of God. Love, love one another, love. 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 Because perfect love casts out of all fear. God hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And if you have the love of God in you, perfected in you, all these things that's happening around us, all these things that's getting ready to take place, they won't affect you. You won't lose your peace because you have perfect love on the inside of you and it has cast out all fear. You know that your assurance is in Yahshua HaMashiach, that he has not left you, that he is with you and will be with you now even until the end of the world. I love you. May heaven smile upon you. Spread this word. Get it out there. Again, you're not promoting me. I don't need your promotion. But I urge you to please share this with at least one person because someone needs to hear it. Shalom.